Lots of breaking news going on in and around our community. Flames destroying an office building this morning. What's next for the structure? Coming up. Live from Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. Well, Fiesta is back and that means the crowds are back as well. Folks lining up bright and early this morning for Battle of Flowers Parade. Ursula Perry and David Sears there as well. Ursula, David, how's it going out there? It is wonderful out here. We couldn't have asked for a better day. David and I have been in the crowds and look, even our boss walking by cleaning up at the KSAT Insider Party. I'm telling you, it's a team effort out here. We love it. We have a lot of people who've had a wonderful morning thanks to being a KSAT Insider. That's not the only job he's had all day. I know. He's been working hard all day. It's been an absolutely fantastic. Got out this morning. It was almost cold. Yeah. Everybody had on jackets and long sleeves and ready to go. But then as the parade started off, things started warming up. It warmed up out there on, on uh, North Main Street with the parade. It was absolutely gorgeous, beautiful place to be. We were like way up North Main, and that's where the uh, parade just started a few blocks up. And it turned out to be a fantastic day. The parade was fantastic, as you would expect. And you know, a lot of folks came because we got locked in last year and didn't have that much yeah. fun. But this year, they showed up in droves. The streets, oh, yeah. the stands, all crowded with people just loving the Fiesta F Battle of Flowers Parade. Well, you know, the thing is, is we haven't really been able to be in a crowd in a long time. And this was really lovely. The, we have a nice breeze blowing. Um, everybody is, it, we're not sweating. And, and at least here, it, it's like a party. It's a party. We're celebrating being able to be out in the sunshine and enjoying life once again. We've got a nice crowd over here. What did y'all What did y'all think of the parade today after not having one last year? What did you think? It was great. It was a lot of fun, and it was a family event for us, and it was just a good time. The boys had a blast. They got their face painted, and it was just a great time. And all y'all belonged to each other? Yeah. yeah. So it was a family affair. It was a family affair, for wow. sure. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. And we've had a lot of families out here, David. Um, this uh, young lady was able to participate in one of the most popular uh, items out here, the face painting. Look at that. Do you like what they did for you? Yes, I do. What do you think about the Battle of Flowers parade? I loved it. You did? Is this your first Battle of Flowers? Yes. And that's something that we're hearing a lot from the younger folks. They haven't had an opportunity really to celebrate Fiesta because nope. it's not really been happening for a couple of years now. So for a lot of these people, this is their first, their first Fiesta. And they'll never forget it. All right, one more time. Give us a Viva Fiesta as we throw it back to Max in the studio. You ready? Three, two, one. Viva Fiesta! All right, now listen, hang on there because we're going to have a cornhole competition, oh. David and I. Oh. You can place your bets now. <laughs> That's coming up. And we also have a report from Jonathan Cotto. <laughs> Viva Fiesta! <laughs> And without further ado, the 2022 Battle of Flowers Parade is officially in full effect. We just love it. It's a big family event for us. The highly anticipated event featuring beauty queens, marching bands, oh, yeah. and of course, floats. Those in attendance just thankful this year's parade wasn't canceled. It's awesome. Even better after COVID. Even better. Thank God. We need to celebrate. The parade taking on a new route, but its celebratory spirit remains. It's safe feeling when I was five years old. You've been coming since you were five years old? The parade. Oh, yes, sir. With my mom, my, my family. And as much fun as everyone is having here right now, organizing and preparing Battle of the Flowers Parade took a lot of behind the scenes work and early morning wake ups. Uh, I've been here since yesterday, since eight o'clock. Since eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. How early did you get here? We woke up at four when we got here around five o'clock. And she wasn't the only one who showed up early. Some folks staying overnight, making sure they claimed the best seats along the parade route. Thousands of chairs set to meet the crowds. We started pretty early, just like everybody else that's out here. And uh, we have our crews broken up into two different teams. Setting up for the parade was just half the job. Volunteers say the real hustle is in the cleanup. More pressure on the breakdown because uh, if you've been down here for one of these, as soon as the parade is over, the city wants to clean this place up and get the streets open again. So we've got to move very quickly. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News.
New at noon, crews had to go back to a north side home after a, a fire started back up. So fire crews say they were first called to this home yesterday after flames were found inside the attic. Uh, this is in the 8700 block of Sage Brush Lane that's near Loop 410 and Nacogdoches Road. Now this morning, crews headed back to the home after flames sparked once again. Luckily, no injuries were reported. And it's been anything but business as usual today at an office building in the medical center. That building on Medical Drive near Data Point, it went up in flames overnight and the fire continued to burn for hours. As Katrina Weber shows us, firefighters say they faced a losing battle. When fire moved into this office building early this morning, San Antonio firefighters made a point of staying outside. The flames had a head start on doing their damage here in the 4100 block of Medical Drive. Firefighters had to make sure they weren't in danger. As you can see, we had multiple collapses, and actually we had the first collapse not too long after the guys were actually operating. Pieces of the building continued to fall. The fire, though, didn't seem to want to give up. A passerby had first noticed smoke around 3.30 this morning and called 911. Before long, the dark cloud had spread throughout the area as far away as Interstate 10. But keeping the flames from spreading was a top priority. The original goal was to contain it to this building, which was met. Although there are several apartments close by, no one had to evacuate and there were no injuries. We don't know the value of the building. We don't know the cause and origin of the fire. We have no clue. We're not even real sure what the building was used for. What is clear is that the fire has left the whole thing in ruins. It won't be used for anything again. With the damage done, firefighters say the demolition will have to begin. They say what is left of this building will have to be torn down. Reporting from the Medical Center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Now to an update in a deadly shooting investigation on the city's east side. Police now say a third victim hit by gunfire, and they did take multiple people into custody for questioning. The investigation started just after 1.30 this morning outside of a home on Belmont near Giver Street. Police say they found two victims at first, a man who died on the scene and a woman who had multiple gunshot wounds. That woman taken to the hospital and then a third victim later showed up at another hospital. Still not clear how those victims are doing this new, but officers say they found about 75 shell casings in the area. Police now working to figure out what exactly happened, but they do say the house is known as a problem in the area. Several people being questioned right now. And a chase on the city's west side ended with four people injured. The Bear County Sheriff's Office tells us two of those people were in a stolen vehicle. BCSO says deputies tried to pull the driver over around 2 a.m. However, that driver just kept going, and that sparked a chase in a west side neighborhood. The driver eventually ended up on Calabar Road, but they were headed in the wrong direction. That led to a head-on crash. Two people in each of the vehicles involved, all four taken to the hospital with multiple injuries. Still unclear what charges will be pending. Well, still ahead on the news at noon, a big boxing match this weekend with a local boxer, Larry Ramirez, joining us with all you need to know. And it has been the talk of the town throughout the morning. Battle of Flowers Parade started at 9 a.m. Right now, Sky 12 flying over downtown. It is in the books, and we are seeing people, we are seeing people clear out of the area. We're going to check back in with David and Ursula. They spent the morning out there. Welcome back. Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine, now entering week seven. A train station filled with thousands of people hit by at least two missiles this morning, killing dozens. This comes as Ukraine braces for a Russian offensive on the eastern and southern parts of the country. Here's ABC's Rena Roy with more. Horrific scenes coming out of eastern Ukraine, where Ukrainian officials say at least 50 have been killed and at least 100 injured in a Russian attack on a train station in Kramatorsk. As thousands were trying to escape before Russia's renewed offensive, you can see smoke billowing into the air. Below, a rocket lies on the ground. Russian officials denying responsibility, as they have in the city of Bucha, where hundreds of innocent civilians have died. This apartment block taking a direct hit. ABC's James Longman with a man named Bodon who lost a friend there. And that is the remains of his friend, his child remains. I mean, I'm looking at his, at his bones, at his, at his body here, just 
lying on the floor. Because of these atrocities, Russia suspended from the United Nations Human Rights Council, and now the European Union approving a fifth round of sanctions on Russia, freezing the assets of several Russian banks, banning coal imports from Russia, and banning access to EU ports for ships flying the Russian flag. Ukraine's foreign minister now warning the battle for the east will be devastating. The battle for Donbas will remind you of the Second World War. Ukrainian President Zelensky is calling for more help from the West as the country braces for more attacks. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says the U.S. is providing Ukrainian forces with intelligence to support their operations in the Donbass region. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, back here at home, 72 degrees out there. I don't see a cloud in the sky. So, Justin, you talked to us on GMSA this morning telling us it was going to be perfect for the parade, and you delivered. It was. I mean, it was really nice. Got to go out there for a few hours. The weather shaped up perfectly. Now, it was nice when there was a breeze, I'll tell you that. Even though we were in the 60s, that sun, it was, it was a little warm. A uh, good breeze, though, helped out from time to time. The aquifer. It is down three tenths of a foot, still falling, 648.9. We're closing in on stage two. It's really only a matter of time, especially with our rain chances staying out of the picture until next week. Pollen count, oak is in the high category. It's highest it's been this season, 3,670 molds at 690 and moderate. Hackberry and mulberry both low. We'll talk weekend and rain chances next week coming up. Welcome back to the KSAT 12 Battle of Flowers post parade party. We still have some KSAT insiders kind of milling around the place just enjoying the company, enjoying the beautiful sunshine. They just got through enjoying a gorgeous parade. Ursula was talking earlier a little bit about one of the most popular things here is the face painting. Very, very popular. Very nice. Uh, a lot of us have got uh, a little bit of glitter. Oh, look at that. Um, we've got monsters. We've got a monster right here. And we've got some angels and princesses and all kinds of things. Really a lovely morning and now turning into a lovely afternoon. But David and I were just remarking about something. Um, Justin Horn, if you look at the ground over here, ooh, this is brutal. Along with the confetti and so forth, awfully dry grass. Very dry, but one a wonderful day. Justin, Max, back to you guys. Thank you. I thought you guys were going to go one on one cornhole. Yeah, we were waiting. That's coming up at 1230. OK, she's got to warm up. Oh, uh, okay. we were taking bets over here. Oh, good. Good. Let the betting begin. Thanks, guys. So Justin Horn, clearly we need yeah. a lot of rain, but it is we a do. picture perfect day out there. It is. And, you know, David's David's needs to warm up. Make sure those joints are are good. Uh, yeah, it, it is. It turned out to be a beautiful day, and you do see how dry the grass is. Now, there is one problem as we head into tomorrow. Uh, we are going to see a high fire danger return again. The, the one reason we don't really worry about it too much today is because we don't have a lot of wind. Uh, that does change tomorrow. Morning lows, pretty incredible. We did get down the freezing in Kerrville, barely. It was, it was for a brief period, but we did. 44 here in San Antonio, 38 in Pleasanton. Really chilly this morning, but once the sun came up, turned into a beautiful day. We're in the 70s now, and I think we make it all the way up into the low 80s. So 44 all the way up to 81. That would be a 37 degree temperature swing. We keep seeing a lot of these because the air is just so dry. And today is no exception. Dew points are in the teens, if not single digits. This is about as low as dew points go around here. And I can tell you just being outside for even an hour or two, my lips are already chapped. That's just how dry it is. You know, you touch up a door handle and it may shock you. Uh, it's not until tomorrow, more so into Sunday, that we see the moisture increase. And that's when, uh, it, well, it'll feel a little more humid outside. Uh, we take a look at the time lapse. And that, by the way, is some smoke from that fire this morning that you saw Katrina Weber reporting on. That has since dissipated, obviously. But as uh, we got into the day, beautiful blue skies and temperatures at 72 degrees now. Humidity is down to 11 percent. Calm winds. And we showed you that low dew point. 68 Kerrville, 68 Fredericksburg, 70 is down to the south, 70 in Randolph, 76 Stinson, 74 right now in Divine. It is uh, shaping up to be uh, just a fantastic afternoon and a fantastic evening. If you have plans to go to Nyosa, looking great. 80 at 3 o'clock, 
79 by 6 p.m., 77, 7 p.m., and then 60s by 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 62 by midnight and clear skies. It'll be another chilly morning tomorrow. We mentioned that increase in moisture. It is headed our way, but you really won't feel it until we get into probably late Sunday into Monday. So with that dew point, yes, rising into the 30s tomorrow, but our winds pick up. So that's why the fire threat is going to come back into play. And you look at the risk for fires tomorrow. It is elevated here around San Antonio. It gets even worse as you get up in the Texas Panhandle. Grass fires, uh, very possible tomorrow afternoon in those areas. Here's a look at the forecast. Will we see any rain? There is a chance there as we get into Monday. We start to get some energy rippling in from the south and west. It's not a great chance. 20% shot on Monday. Uh, uh, sort of a more strong, a stronger system works its way in on Tuesday, and that may give us a little more lift. Uh, this is around five o'clock, does show some showers and storms. We're going to put it at a 30% chance. Looks like it'll be San Antonio and points east, but we'll keep you posted. If we do see any storms, they do have the possibility to become strong to severe. 86 Saturday, 85 on Sunday, 86 Monday with that 20% chance of rain. We'll go 85 Tuesday <clears throat> with a 30% chance of rain. Maybe a front by the end of next week, uh, but it will be more more humid next week. So maybe we can get rid of some of this uh, fire threat that we have going on right now. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. Speaking of storms, you know who was an unstoppable storm last night? Mm, let me think. Anthony Edwards. Yes, Minnesota Timberwolves. He picked a bad night for the Spurs. That is to just go off on the silver and black. And because of it, the Spurs suffered a tough loss, particularly when it comes to the play in tournament and the Pelicans accomplished a first last night. Coming up. I think he was the number one pick in the draft, so that would indicate that there's something there. He's a hell of a player. Pop is talking about Anthony Edwards, who nearly dropped a 50 piece on the Spurs last night in Big Board Sports. Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves beat the Spurs 127-121 last night, hurting the Spurs bid to host a playing game. Edwards did some major damage, scoring a career-high 49 points. He scored from all over the court, and he shot 16 for 28 overall. As for the Spurs, Joshua Primo continues to play well. Trey Jones to Primo for the alley-oop slam for two of his 12 points. Moving to the third quarter now, Minnesota goes up by 18, thanks to Edwards driving in for a huge slam dunk. Now the Spurs fought until the very end, getting to within four with 11 seconds to go in the ball game. We knew when we went in the halftime, you know, we played, uh, we played soft in the first half. I feel like, uh, you know, second half we picked it up and I think we went down 19 or something like that. Still kept fighting, fighting, fighting. So, uh, you know, yeah. And we kept fighting. I'm proud of, proud of me and my teammates. All our coaches, we kept fighting. We never, never given up. Uh, no matter who's out there, uh, they're playing until when the clock hits zero. Um, I mean, we had a chance there for a second. Um, and, you know, they were able to hit a couple free throws down the stretch or whatever to push it to four. But, um, yeah, we're never, we're never uh, going to lay down. Spurs are back home to host the Golden State Warriors tomorrow night at 730. So with the Spurs losing, they really needed the Blazers to beat the Pelicans. It didn't happen. The Pels defense made sure that blocking shots and forcing 22 turnovers, resulting in 36 points for New Orleans. C.J. McCollum led the Pelicans with a game high 23 points. Winners of two straight. It sounds like the Pels are peaking at just the right time. Very pleased with our level of concentration. Um, you know, we talked about go chopping the season up into tens and we just finished at seven and three for the first time all season. So uh, it's good to be playing our best basketball towards the end of the season. And we just want to continue that momentum. Spurs Pelicans play in tournament game is scheduled for Wednesday night at 830 location to be determined. Now the Spurs need to win their last two games and the Pels to lose their last two games for the Spurs to move up to ninth and host that contest. Yesterday was the final press conference for Ryan Garcia and Emmanuel Tego before the two boxers fight Saturday night at the Alamo Dome in the main event. San Antonio boxer Gregory Morales will show off his skills on the undercard. The Jefferson alum is 13 and 0 with eight knockouts and he will fight in the dome where he walked the stage when he graduated from Jeff. 
It's a blessing, and it's crazy because, like I said, you know, I was I was walking down that same uh, aisle, that same little space. I was walking down it, and I was like, "Yo, I graduated here like three years ago, and now I'm fighting here." And like, and it's crazy. It's, it's just, it's, just uh, it's crazy. I still can't can't wrap my head around it. Gregory is scheduled to face Katsuma Akatsugi in an eight-round featherweight fight. The undercard starts tomorrow, 3.30 p.m. at the Alamo Dome, and that's got to be a trip, right? Three years ago, you graduated from the Dome, and now you're on the big stage fighting. That is so cool. Full circle. Yep. All right, you're going to be back at 12.30? I will be here. All right, see you then, Larry. <laughs> Thank you. All right. For now, though, a grim prediction for food prices. The USDA says your grocery bill is only going to get higher and higher. What you can expect, still ahead. And of course, it's been the talk of the town, the Battle of Flowers Parade. It is over, another one of the books, but the fiesta fun continues. David and Ursula joining us live. They're going to have a look at upcoming events, plus how one major event will clearly affect traffic tomorrow night. That's in our next half hour. And welcome back to the KSL 12 Battle of Flowers post parade party. I think Ursula and I are both still amazed and excited about what a beautiful day it was and what a fantastic parade it was and how the crowds were just all enjoying it. It really was. And, I, you know, we're breaking down here, but we're going to be back for Fiesta Flambeau. We'll have a KSAT Insiders event then. And we've got so much more to come. If you want to check out what's going on with Fiesta this weekend, all you got to do is go to KSAT.com or you can just click on the QR, QR code on your screen right now and it'll give you all the events coming up. Of course, I know you love the horses. What else kind of stood out to you besides, besides the horses today? I loved the bands. I thought everybody looked cool and comfortable for a change. Usually we're sweating and uh, this was just really perfect. Nice little breeze coming through, but you know, uh -oh. I have a little energy left. Do okay, you? you got energy? I got uh, I've got enough energy for, for some competition. All right, so, so we have the KSAT Cornhole All right. uh, competition. Here. This was one of the uh, games that we had here at the KSAT Insiders. So you too can come challenge Ursula Perry for a KSAT. All right, Max, who'd you bet on? Go ahead, you start. <laughs> All right, oh, that's a little short. It's warming up. Just, well, you almost knocked over the pinata. There we go. There we go. There we go. Ooh. All right. Well, so far, not too good. Oh, it's a little long. One more. Oh. For the big finish. All right. This is a situation where there were no adult beverages involved, and I think that those are required in order to do better at this game. Yeah, it just, that just looked kind of boring, didn't it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we work on that. All right. We, we've had a great time here, and I have to say, Viva Fiesta like never before yep. because it's so nice to be back after COVID. And, you know, of course, there's the Flambeau Parade tomorrow night, and you're going to have to pay attention to the traffic pattern since the parade is going down a different route this year. And Steve Gavassos has got an update for you on what you can expect when you come downtown tomorrow night for the big Flambeau Parade. Viva Fiesta San Antonio. If you plan to head to the Flambeau Parade Saturday, well, keep in mind, new route means new closures. Let's take a look at that right now. You can see these are some of the closures that have been provided to us by the city of San Antonio. Keep in mind, Maine from Ashby to Euclid, Lexington from Maine to Avenue A, St. Mary's from Richmond to 9th Street. We're going to see some of these closures that are going to be lasting throughout the weekend. Now, keep in mind, it's a lot of information, so just take a really good look here. But what you can do is make sure that you plan ahead if you plan to head out to the Flambeau Bow Parade Saturday. And as a reminder, grab those phones. We're going to bring up that QR code. Keep in mind, all that information is posted on our website right now, ksat.com. Scanning that QR code will actually take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. That's where you'll find the latest on all the information relating to Fiesta closures and, of course, the latest on your commute. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Taking a live look out there. 74 degrees now, not a cloud in the sky. So I got to say, I bet on David, but Justin, you did have Ursula. Yeah, well, I, 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 so I think I won that one. Well, the, the David, I wasn't watching actually. Did David make it? <laughs> I think David won. Sorry, I should have been watching. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it was a good competition. I, I'm sure it was. Uh, <laughs> but it was uh, really nice out there today. Uh, you know, the sun was out. We had perfect conditions. Temperatures were very comfortable and uh, really worked out perfect for Battle of Flowers.
I want to show you the uh, the aquifer here, and this is important because we're seeing that number drop steadily. We're down to 649 today. That doesn't mean we're in stage two yet because we've got to wait on that 10 day rolling average, but it's uh, just a foot away. And I suspect that uh, by early next week, unless we get some rain, we're going to go right into stage two. Uh, that doesn't, and this is for sauce customers, of course, but this does not mean, it doesn't change a whole lot. Uh, it's still once a week watering. But as you get into stage two, it's between 7 to 11 and 7 to 11 a.m. and p.m. So it just restricts the times a little bit more. A heads up there. 72 degrees in San Antonio right now. 70 in Kerrville, 72 in New Braunfels, 72 Hondo, 77 right now in Cthulhu. It's, it's warming up some after what was a really chilly morning. We had temperatures in the low 40s a little bit earlier. 69 Canyon Lake, 73 Comfort, 73 in Divine. In the next few days, you got Fiesta plans. I know we got uh, the King William. Fair coming up tomorrow morning. Looks good for that. It's going to be a little windy tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures a little bit warmer on your Saturday, but still great for Flambeau. And by Sunday, we will see more clouds, more humidity, and we're hoping, we're keeping our fingers crossed, that leads to some rain by Monday or Tuesday of next week. Max. Thank you, Justin. President Joe Biden holding a special event at the White House today with newly confirmed Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson and Vice President Kamala Harris. So the Senate made history yesterday when they confirmed Jackson to the Supreme Court, making her the court's first black woman to serve as a justice, as well as its first former public defender. Jackson watched the vote at the White House with President Biden. Still photographers were allowed in the Roosevelt Room to capture the historic moment. Meanwhile, Vice President Harris, who is the first black woman to serve as vice president, presided over this historic vote. And speaking of President Joe Biden, his vaccine mandate for federal employees has now been reinstated. The majority on a three member panel of the fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals said a lower court did not have jurisdiction to issue an injunction on the mandate. The new decision lifts that lower district court's January injunction that stopped the requirement and ordered the lower court to dismiss the case. So far, lawyers for the mandate's challengers have not said if they plan to appeal this decision. And the Department of Agriculture says you can expect the price of food to continue to skyrocket. Prices already up 9% on average for the year and the USDA says they'll go up 4.5 to 5% even more. Restaurant prices are forecasted to rise even faster, up 6.5%. Particularly impacted will be the beef and veal markets, which are expected to increase up to 7%. Here's another factor. Avian flu also causing chicken prices to go up about the same amount. Fresh vegetables, they are expected to see the smallest change to their current prices. Still ahead on the news at noon, another company imposing sanctions on Russia. Here's the thing, customers are upset and they're showing it by destroying their own property, a property worth thousands and thousands of dollars. We're gonna explain. And of course, football right around the quarter, corner. We're talking about quarterbacks. And we're talking about one of the top recruits in the last couple years at UT. Will he have the starting role? Larry's gonna join us. And the TSA always finding surprising things when people pass through security checkpoints at airports. However, their latest find had a traveler surprise as well. This day in Fiesta history is powered by the Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. For more than 130 years, the Battle of Flowers Parade has been a bright and beautiful celebration in downtown San Antonio. The idea for the parade came from prominent San Antonians J.S. Alexander and Ellen Slayton. It was San Jacinto Day and people kept saying, well, let's celebrate that. Yeah, but how? And then the ladies wanted to do some kind of spring flower thing like they did in Nice and Khan in Mexico City. The women created their own version in San Antonio in April of 1891 when President Benjamin Harrison came to town, the first time any president had stopped in San Antonio. A few women sat there and staged a battle in front of the Alamo and threw flowers at each other. The Battle of Flowers has grown to a parade enjoyed by hundreds of thousands of people and seen by millions more on TV. From what those five 10 women, it's you know over 10,000 participants and they now are still going in front of the Alamo and laying wreaths. And it is the oldest and it is the what founded Fiesta, but I think it's so much more because it's so much more about bringing the community together and about love of our city and love of history. Welcome back. A sharp-eyed TSA officer in Boston stopping a passenger from bringing 
get this, a sword onto a plane. So the man who had the sword, apparently completely unaware that his walking cane had a large blade inside of it. So after TSA officers confiscated the concealed sharp edged weapon, the passenger was allowed to travel on his way. This is a reminder that if the passenger had put the cane with the sword inside in his checked luggage, it would have been fine. All right, high end fashion house Chanel imposing some restrictions on Russian customers. People buying Chanel products are being asked to confirm the items won't be used in Russia. To protest these sanctions, Russian women, they are now destroying their own Chanel handbags. The purse prices can cost several thousand dollars, and viral videos are all on the internet showing women taking scissors to the Chanel bags. All right, we're back here at home taking a live look out there. Gorgeous day, perfect parade weather, 74 now, Justin. What can we expect? Uh, more nice weather. I think we're going to be spoiled uh, for Battle of Flowers going forward because this was a fantastic day for it. And if you're heading out to Nyosa tonight, it looks good too. Temperatures so far today, 72. After morning low, 44. So we've almost gained 30 degrees just like that thanks to the dry airs. The averages are 79 and 57, and we were well below average this morning. Records are 98 and 35 set back in 1989 and 2007. We do have some changes next week, some good changes. We'll look ahead with the seven day forecast coming up. Welcome back 1244 this Friday afternoon and it is a very fiesta oriented Friday. Not only did we have the parade this morning, we have Niosa this evening. Justin, you actually made it out to the parade earlier. Went out there for a few hours. It was crowded, but it was fun. It felt great. We had blue skies, a little bit of a breeze. The breeze helped because even though temperatures were in the 60s, when you're standing in the sun, it still gets a little bit warm. Uh, but all in all, it turned out fantastic. Glad to see everyone back in full swing this year. Uh, what about rain chances? I, I know that, uh, that we've had the nice weather for the parades and that's great, but we do need some rain too, right? So as we look into next week, we do have some chances there. Monday night into Tuesday, maybe into Tuesday night. They're not great chances. I think anything we see is going to be isolated, but at least the pattern gets a little more active as we get into next week. And that should hopefully lead to at least a little bit on the radar and every little bit helps at this point with the drought that we're in. As you go outside, we got blue skies and 72 degrees. Dew point is at 14 with calm winds. And that dew point is just so very low. And these numbers are actually falling a little bit. And when the air is this dry, you still have a fire threat, even if there's not a lot of wind. Now it's not a high fire threat today, but as we get into tomorrow, still with some dry air around and gustier winds, the fire threat kicks back in for sure by tomorrow afternoon, uh, but just extremely dry conditions and temperatures 69 Kerrville, 72 in Hondo, 76 Beeville, a little closer, 68 Bernie State, 72 in Holota, 76 down there at Stinson at this hour with clear skies there. Niosa's forecast uh, down to 79 by 6 p.m., 75 by 8 p.m., and 67 by 10 p.m. Should be a great evening. Uh, we've had great weather for Niosa, minus the first night when it was still a little warm, but uh, things are looking great uh, for uh, everything going on tonight across the city. 81 degrees, the forecast side today. 74 for Fair Oaks Ranch, 79 in Castroville, 80 down in Pleasanton, and then by tomorrow morning, chilly again. Not as cold as this morning, but still cold, or cool nonetheless 48 degrees here in San Antonio 47 Ferrox Ranch 47 in Canyon Lake tomorrow morning and then we rebound into the mid 80s. I mentioned the fire threat yesterday. It is there not only for us but for a large portion of Texas. Those gusty winds kick back in out of the south and with those low dew points uh, it's a distinct possibility that we get some grass fires across the state tomorrow. It's just been so incredibly dry for the entire state and the western half of the country. You look at the big picture here and we do have some rain and some snow actually with an upper level low that's moving across the Great Lakes. Some cold air bottled up there and we're on the back side of it. So that's why some of that cooler air has made it down into Texas. As we look forward, the pattern changes. So we start to get more moisture in here by Sunday. That brings more clouds. And then by Monday afternoon, there's an outside chance for a shower or storm. I think as we get into Tuesday, that's probably our best opportunity. The problem with that is if we do see any storms, there's a chance that they could be on the strong side. The best chance will probably be to the north and probably east of San Antonio, but 
we still have an opportunity. And as we get closer, we can refine that forecast a little bit better. 86 tomorrow, 85 on Sunday, 20% chance rain Monday, 30% chance Tuesday. We may go as high as 90 by Wednesday once things clear out a little bit. But thankfully, it looks like we'll get another front to cool us back down as we head into next weekend. But in the meantime, we will enjoy this great fiesta weather. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. So, Larry, I got to tell you, a lot of people had their alarms set for today. <laughs> Second day teeing off for Tiger. Yeah, and yesterday during the first round, I was pretty much glued to my computer watching the live feed from the Masters because I wanted to see how Tiger was playing. And I'll tell you what, he looked good yesterday. Tiger should certainly be pumped up heading into round two. And in Major League Baseball, the Astros are smiling. Coming up. good to show like uh, it's good to have QB battles and like battles in every position to show like everybody's like your spot's just not secure like you have to still work every day so I feel like it was just good like it. That's Longhorns receiver Xavier Worthy talking about the addition of quarterback Quinn Ewers in big board sports. Up in Austin, the Longhorns are going through spring football drills and Texas figures to have one of the hottest quarterback battles in the country this offseason. Can sophomore Hudson Card hold off former five-star recruit and Ohio State transfer Quinn Ewers? Hudson has the upper hand because he played for Coach Sark last season. Here's wide receiver Xavier Worthy on that QB competition. Quinn, he put some zip on that thing, so, but they both, they both throw a pretty good ball. Um, it's a, a QB battle. They're both doing really good right now, so I'm excited to see how that turns out. Ewers is the Horn's highest rated quarterback since Vince Young in 2002. Augusta Nationals looking good as always, as was Tiger Woods in the first round of the Masters yesterday. He carded a one under 71 to finish four shots off the lead, which is remarkable. His return comes 14 months after a car crash that shattered his right leg. Doctors inserted screws, pins, and a metal rod into his shin. Tiger ended up in the red while walking 18 holes is <laughs> amazing. I can swing a golf club. It's the the walking is not 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 easy it's, and it's, it's difficult. And um, as I said, with all the hardware in my leg, it's 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 going to be difficult. You know, for the rest of my life. It's just the way it is. But uh, I'm able to do it, and that's something I'm very lucky to have this opportunity to be able to play. And not only that, to play in the Masters and to have um, this type of reception. I mean, the the, the place was electric. And it will be electric again today. Here's a quick look at the leaderboard. Round two in progress. Sunjay's in a three-way tie for first at four under par. Tiger teed off at 1241. The Spurs saw their five-game road winning streak come to an end at Minnesota last night, falling to the Timberwolves 127-121. They now trail the Pelicans by two games for ninth in the West. So that means the Spurs need to win their final two and have the Pels lose their last two games for the Spurs to move up to ninth and host New Orleans in the play-in game Wednesday. So the Spurs will host the Warriors tomorrow night at 7.30. It's their final home game this regular season. Yesterday was opening day in Major League Baseball, and the Astros opened up at the Angels. Top of the eighth, tied at one. Alex Bregman hits a solo shot to left field and just over the outfielder's glove, 363 feet, and the Strohs lead 2-1. to one. Very next batter, Jordan Alvarez, goes big fly, 422 feet to center field for back-to-back -back shots, and the Astros win their 10th straight season opener by the final of 3-1. to one. Padres at the Diamondbacks, bottom of the ninth. Arizona's down one with two on when Seth Beer smacks a three-run shot to right field for a walk-off touch them all, and he did it on National Beer Day. Diamondbacks win four to two. Beer was mobbed by his teammates at home plate, and I just couldn't resist showing that one. Beer and beer. That's right. Did they spray him with beer? <laughs> Probably in the locker room. Or the clubhouse, I should say. Yeah. Clubhouse. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, 12.55 this Friday afternoon. What's popping on SA Live? <laughs> oh, just wait. Battle of Flowers Parade was fantastic this morning, but the fun is not over yet. Wait till you see the parade that we have in store. I mean, this parade is absolutely adorable. Cue the cuteness, and it gives back to our four-legged friends. Woo! Yes, we have five local pet rescues here, and all the floats, you've seen them all. Who is going to win? Who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know who makes the decision? This lady right next to us. Yes, Denise Cabello with Barbie Cutie.
Company Smokehouse. Yes. First of all, did you come straight from there? Because they are going to, they're going to be on you. I, they, they smell the meat, <laughs> right? But that's okay. I'm a big dog lover. This may be the toughest deci decision that I faced in a long time, but tough job, someone's got to do it. We're excited to give back in a big way. Boy, you're not going to believe these wagons that some of our local designers have uh, have made for us. So this is going to be a fantastic parade. Oh, uh, yes. All that and more when SA Live continues. And right? a metal giveaway, and, too. Oh, that's Can't right. Our metal that. giveaway. Jen's We're going to tell you where to be. Yes, you can't forget about this. This is our final SA Live Fiesta Metal giveaway. I can't tell you just yet where we are, but if you want to get your hands on this baby right here, it's one of my favorites, by the way. Favorite Fiesta Metal, we'll tell you where. I'll give you a little hint. Vroom, vroom, that's a hint. And yeah, they have these amazing drinks here. All right, I, I'm excited for y'all's dog parade. SA Live returns after the break. Mm. Welcome back. One last look at the forecast. We're at 75 right now on our way to 81 this afternoon. Sunny skies, beautiful day, chilly tomorrow morning, a little bit more wind on your Saturday, 86, and then more moisture on Sunday. We'll start to get some humidity and some rain chances back in the forecast by Monday and Tuesday. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. That is it for us here on the News at Noon. SA Live starts right now. Coming to you from Historic Market Square. This is the Battle of Flowers Parade After Party Fiesta Special, powered by HEB. of Fiesta, of course, are here today to enjoy a parade like no other. Good afternoon, I'm Fiona Gorsiza. And I'm my ghost agent, of course. The crowd from Battle of Flowers is now down here in Market Square. They are raring to go, so we are keeping the party going with the Fiesta Fido Parade. Now, we all know Fiesta is a party with a purpose. It's a party, but it's a party with a purpose, raising funds for nonprofits all over the city. And of course, we wanted to join in this year. Absolutely. So we got some big help. We enlisted five local artists, crafters, and designers to create mini floats for five local pet rescues. Now, they're going to parade here through our studio, and the best one will win a $500 donation for their rescue from Barbie Cutie Smokehouse. Let's hear from Barbie Cutie Smokehouse. And of course, the judge is a representative for Barbie Cutie, and we'll give her three categories to judge on the overall impact, sticking to the theme, and the Fiesta event, that's the theme, highlighting the rescue, and of course, their dogs. And we'd also like you at home to be a part of our show as well. Go to our Facebook and Twitter pages, get a first look at all the floats before even these folks get to see the floats, <laughs> and which one do you think is the best? And send us a picture, of course, your dog dressed up for Fiesta. Yes, tag us at SA live case at on Facebook and Twitter and you may see that a little later in the show. All right, so now it is time to get ready to give away some free stuff like our SA Live Fiesta medal. There it is right there. And you know who's giving it away? Jen Tobias Strosky. Good afternoon, Jen Viva Fiesta. Where are you? Hey guys, yes, we are so excited. Can't wait to start handing out our SA Live Fiesta medals. It's our last giveaway, so it's kind of sad, right? But I'm so excited to be here. Now it's time for the big reveal. Where we are at on the far west side, it is Caliber Auto Care at 10330 Petrenko Road inside Loop 1604. And here with me is Samantha Henderson, Director of Marketing with Caliber Auto Care. Hello, Samantha. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. Everyone here is ready to fiesta. Now, this is just one way Caliber Auto Care is celebrating fiesta this year, but what else do you guys have planned? Absolutely. So, Caliber Auto Care, Caliber Collision, and Caliber Auto Glass are here today to uh, give out free fiesta medals. Got it. So there's medals, there's goodies, there's quite the setup, by the way, outside. But what can people expect when they come in here? It's it's so inviting, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. So Caliber Auto Care prides itself on trust through transparency. And so what that means is that every vehicle that comes in through our door will perform a digital vehicle inspection report. And we'll make sure that you get to see all of the photos and notes on your vehicle and make sure that you're safe and ready to go. Got it. And in here, there's a nice waiting area. There's even a space for the kiddos right over there. So why should Caliber Auto Care San Antonio be San Antonio Driver's first choice? So Caliber Auto Care, you know, 
uh, we are, our purpose is to restore the rhythm of your life. And so that means, you know, we are really ingrained in our communities and we want to be a part of the communities that we serve. And so we, we're just really excited to be here. And a great place to work. By the way, you're hiring, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so Caliber Collision, Caliber Auto Care, and Caliber Auto Glass, are, we're hiring for all brands. And so, um, you know, we're here today. And so if you're, you're interested, we also have our recruiting team out here. Yeah, and there's your awesome team members back there working hard. Uh, just, I hear a great place to work, by the way. So you have some special savings on oil changes too. Tell me we all do. about this. We do, we do. So we're passing out Fiesta medals today, first come, first serve. But for the remainder of the weekend, um, if you come in and get an oil change, you'll, you get $20 off your next oil change and also get a Fiesta medal. All right, sounds like a win, yeah. win. By the way, there's uh, not just, yes, thank you. Look, there's drinks out there. We also have tacos. <laughs> tacos, uh, promo items. I mean, There's come, gift come out and visit us. And just a good time. And the weather's perfect. So, all right. Today's SA Live Fiesta Metal Giveaway. It starts at 2 p.m. at Caliber Auto Care at 10 3 3 Zero Petrinka Road. Come out here, get your free medal. You can probably get a medal from them as well. And to schedule your service appointment at Caliber Auto Care Collision or Auto Glass location near you, visit Caliber.com and stick around because we're going to tell you how you can get your, your chipped auto glass fixed for free. Keyword there, free. <laughs> all right, Fiona like Mike. That. It's all about you. the free stuff Sounds there. like a okay. good time over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and we are mm -hmm. gonna hear more mm -hmm. from her a little later on. Oh, she got a cocktail too. All right. Hey, the doggies are getting settled into their floats right now, getting ready for their big moment. And boy, this is one parade that you are not going to want to miss. But we need to let you know who is behind the grand prize. Oh, uh, yes. And drum roll, please. Denise Cabello from Barbecue Smokehouse Restaurant is here. And we have dogs in the studio, and we've got barbecue in the studio. We possibly go wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just push through. Okay. So, why did Barbecue want to get so involved? Absolutely. It's so important for Barbecue to give back to the community. And we're locally owned. Uh, owners Maurice and Tommy really wanted to show their support for the community. So giving back to nonprofits was just such an easy way to do that. But we can also support your local schools, organizations by hosting fundraiser nights. So if you want to do that, get a hold of us and we can help you raise funds for your organization. And you have some delicious food yeah. here as well. These are, this is just an ex a sampling, right? A sampling. These are some new menu items. Let's start over here with a gift. I know when you go barbecue, you might not think you're going to get a quesadilla, but at barbecue you will, and you're going to get some Monterey cheese on that, pico, bacon, brisket, and it comes with a nice dip, delicious. Now let's move on to our Nashville-inspired hot chicken sandwich. Whoa. I literally had that yesterday. Really? It is so good, and you can pick your heat on that one as well. It's got a secret sauce on it, some coleslaw, some pickles you'll leave happy. And then this one is our loaded sweet potato baker. So you got butter, sour cream, your meat of choice, topped with cheese. Oh. I recommend trying the pulled pork, but really wherever you go, it's gonna be tasty. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh -huh. a meal for two people. And of course, dog friendly <laughs> patio. Yeah, exactly. We just hosted a pup parade. You can bring your furry family members out to Barbecue as well. We've got a huge patio for the kiddos and the pups to run around. Plus, we got some menu items for the pups too. That's really yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, well, we are going to have Denise. She's going to join me outside at the judges' table as we get ready for the parade coming up, and she's going to be the one. It's all in her hands. Who decides when to win our big parade today? She's going to be player. drunk with power. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, next, we get the show on the road. Our first floats parade through our Market Square studio, and we learn more about the rescues and designers behind these moving works of art. And the Battle of Flowers Parade After Party continues with our Fiesta Fido Parade. Don't go anywhere. The SA Live Fiesta Fido Parade has roots in the pandemic when the SA Live team did their own dog parade from home, creating floats and parading through their own homes and neighborhoods. This cute idea grew into the fantastical fundraiser you're about to witness today.